Gotcha. And uh, sorry, uh, please lead on. Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, I am not familiar with right eye um, or right eye. What is it? Is that a is that a device, a wearable device or something for your visual system? Yeah, it's real. It's cool, Brandon. It's uh, it's I mean, it's real similar to probably EMDR. OK, so they're probably doing a lot of the research from EMDR, but it's it's a technology that they do a visual assessment with people and then it starts to help doing the retraining of it. Um, it's, inter it's interesting, JR, that you bring that up. Uh, I work with a friend who's a practitioner and she uses it with her people and lots of people can get benefits from it. Um, but at the same time, you always run into the people that it's like, why isn't this technology helping them? And even with neurofeedback, it's like, well, whose brain decides that that neurofeedback is the right type of neurofeedback? Who programmed right eye to say that that's the way we want our eyes to have their training? There is a standard like, you know, reflex that the human body has and we can train it so that we have the standard reflex, right? But beyond that, I, I start to, you know, Brandon and I were talking about this last week. I start to kind of question things a little bit in terms of unless somebody's really explaining how they know these things through the brain and why it's being programmed this way, it's kind of questionable. Like it's neat. It's cool. It's expensive. Yeah. Um, where like the stuff that Brandon's doing here and the way that he understands it and teaches it, it's you're using your own technology. You're understanding your own body better. You're understanding every situation that you walk into through your nervous system. Like, and not just your visual system and your vision, your vestibular system, your entire proprioception system. You tune in enough, you start to realize that your entire bio field, your energetic field is tied into the nervous system. Right. And it's, I mean, everybody just is where they're at and they're tuned into what their awareness is. Hmm. Right. And technology nice. give people a really cool boost, but then you run into problems where it's like, why didn't it work for that person? So True. I'm a big fan of both using the technology and oh. understanding my body's ability to improve itself. Yeah. Me too. Well said. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, I, I agree. Both and I like I like technology. Um, I like shortcuts. <laughs> I'm human, right? And honestly, that's why I love using um, the applied neuro techniques because in some ways they feel like shortcuts. If I can, you know, get rid of somebody's pain like that with a simple vestibular drill, you know, it feels like a shortcut especially when they've been dealing with chronic pain for 20 years. Right. Um, but like Joe said, it's, you're leveraging, you know, your own internal um, systems, your own internal technology, as he put it, which, which I love that um, to get it done. And like, I have, I have a client right now who um, she's done. She's pretty much done it all at this point, but she just went through another round of transcranial magnetic stimulation uh, for her, you know, depression, anxiety and stuff like that. And it is helpful. It is helpful for her, but it doesn't cure anything. You know, these things still in some ways are kind of band-aids in some, some of them. I don't know all the technologies out there and they're growing so fast. It'd be impossible to even keep up, but um for for her and for many others it's helping with the symptoms and it's it's starting to dig a little deeper and get towards the root causes through kind of the indirect way but um i view the the direct and intentional um work with the nervous system and the specific brain areas with the assessments and process that we use is more of like a bottom up and kind of root cause approach, but they're both valuable. I think, um, for instance, like an easy technology that I use every day are bone conduction headphones. Right. I mean, by themselves, they're, 
great for listening to music and being able to hear the world because they're not stuffed in your ear. But if you dig a little deeper and you understand the vestibular system and how it works um, to um, modulate your brain's perception of threats in the environment, you, um, you dig in a little, little research, they actually discovered that you can use these to stimulate your vestibular system in a very direct way with certain frequencies of vibration. And so I can use this as a passive tool to give input to my vestibular system. <laughs> but I have to know and I have to be able to assess whether or not the input I'm giving my brain, and in this case, my vestibular system, is a positive input that my brain actually wants more of. Right? And so that's that's where our assessment process comes in, comes in handy. Um, wow. Yeah. So, you know, lots of tools out there. And a lot of them are really good, um, but that's probably a huge one of the one of the main things I tell all my clients in the beginning is like, listen, if you if you took nothing else away from our time together, no matter how short or long, except for this process of assessing and reassessing your nervous system after you give it a new input, you will be far and above. Mm -hmm. 99% of people out there and you will continue to get better because you're getting data and you're getting feedback on what you're doing and whether or not it's helpful. So that's a really important piece. Cool. Um, yeah, to, great questions. The, to your point too, Brandon, about the assessments is it being both and is a lot of times people get technologies and then it's a hack. So then they want to do it and then they think more is better. And so often people then use the technology and are completely abusing it in manners where, you know, they're going above and beyond what was actually a good dose for them. Yeah. I see that often. Yeah. So, so, you know, sometimes we just get caught up in this, you know, well, I need to spend an hour with somebody or I need to spend 90 minutes with somebody and in reality, you needed 10 seconds with that piece of technology. Sure. So, so the, the assess and reassess and knowing yourself so that when you know I'm seeking out this type of practitioner who's using this type of technology, that you're going into it with a, an understanding for yourself already versus you going into it wondering, What's this piece of technology going to do for me? And why am I here? I'm just exploring and checking it out. Right. So to me, once you understand the, the neuro stuff as well, it really strengthens um, your ability to make decisions when it comes to spending money on fancy technology. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I want to, I want to give a quick shout out and hello to OJ. Glad you're here. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I'm just curious um, if I may tell you why I'm here. I'm setting up a um, clinic in Toronto, and I just purchased the equipment, the transcranial uh, magnetic stimulus, the TMS, nice. and, and also um, a brain mapping uh, uh, equipment. I'm really excited. Uh, we we have we manage a pain clinic, and we think that this might be a, a technology that could help with both mental health as well as pain management. That's why I was curious on what you offer and what you guys are all about and if I could co incorporate any of that into this clinic. Certainly. So, um, again, those are probably, I'm, I'm not, I've, my brother owns a mobile medical clinic and he just, he just bought this mobile, uh, they call it like a QEEG machine. And it's kind of like a brain mapping machine. That's exactly for... what it is. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. So, um, uh, I've worked with those a little bit and they are very cool. I am, I am very impressed by those. Um, the, the TMS in conjunction with that, you're going to get, some incredible data and you're going to be able to see changes over time with the brain mapping equipment after your TMS sessions and things like that. I think that's going to be really powerful just by itself. 
right? The technology like we've been talking about is very <clears> cool. <throat> now, when your patient goes home, then what are they gonna do? Typically, um, you know, the TMS is uh, 30 to 40 sessions. Yeah. Uh, so they have to come in uh, five days a week. Any session is half an hour. So yeah. that's an opportunity basically to coach them uh, with some basic lifestyle approach, uh, whether it's meditation, diet, uh, poor sleep hygiene that they need to incorporate because yeah. nothing standalone works. I mean, the best technology in the world, if you sleep three hours a night and eat, you know, 5,000 calories, I don't think exactly. that translates into any wellness. Exactly. But, but that that was like I'm looking for anything to enhance this experience. I'll be honest with you. I just finished a course at MIT. It was a six weeks neurosciences and business. It was amazing. Cool. So it, it was really the physiology of brain and how brain works and how you could use that into becoming more mindfulness and uh, creative in a business environment. Which as a businessman, I thought it was really amazing. So. Basically, like, I mean, how could I help people uh, using any technology or application is what I'm after. Yeah. So, TJ, I'll get to you in just a second. Let me just give a, a little note here and then we'll we'll go to you. The, 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 the reason I ask, like, what do they do when they go home um, is because with a lot of these technologies, you know, they can't take them home. They can come in for sessions five days a week. And that's great. But like you said, you know, if they go home and they go back to this lifestyle of just sitting at a desk all day staring at a screen and then not exercising and not sleeping well and eating like garbage and and all of these things then you're going to kind of negate a lot of the work that you're doing so there's that and the lifestyle coaching part of it sounds like you got that um, kind of squared away and you got a plan there the um the thing that i think could really boost your results with all of that is the applied neurology training or the neuro training. And because the drills that we do um, through the proprioceptive system, through the, through the respiratory system, the vestibular, the visual system, um, they're, they're so easy. They take two to five minutes max and you just do them frequently throughout the day. Um, that that is like homework that you could give somebody to completely um, transform them while they're, you know, not in your hands for 30 minutes a day. Right. So the, the conjunction, the marrying of the technology that you're using with the applied neurology um, of them going home with homework with stuff that they can do throughout the day and the assessment process to actually be able to check in with their own nervous system and see that they are getting better every time they do these things is would be incredibly powerful. And I've actually seen this work um, with some concussion patients and just, you know, your normal, normal brains. Um, we haven't actually measured them on the EEG machine, but um, the, the, I mean, the results in, in a lot of subjective measures and especially in like pain um, are pretty, pretty substantial. Like the, um, for instance, just working with the visual and vestibular system and, and the integration of those sensory systems um, is a pretty powerful tool that is a very easy thing to train with simple integrated drills that anybody can do anywhere. So that's kind of the one of the huge benefits and draws for applied neurology is the easy the ease of use and um, the um, it goes anywhere right. There's no tools. There's no you don't need anything to do it. Um, so Just that's what I see. Right? What's that? Just the application. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so your application basically guides you through what you need to do. You mean my application like on school? Correct. Yeah. So that's, um, you know, I started the initial build out and I'm continuing to build that out. And so this is helpful. So um, I kind of know what what is needed um, to build that out. But if you go into the DIY, like do it yourself, neuro training, 
you could kind of just follow that process and you could test out all those things yourself. And um, in the beginning, there are a few little videos that I kind of explain at least the, the you know, it's a very, it's a very cursory, it's a kind of an overview of the ways to think about it, like the analogies of the, like the threat bucket and how your brain um, takes inputs and how it interprets those inputs and then gives you an output, right? That neur that neuro loop that is constantly going and how we can interrupt um, and give ourselves new outputs by giving the body and brain new inputs, right? Very simple, simplistic view of it. But when you describe it to clients and stuff, that's just an easy way for getting them to get it to stick. And that threat analogy, along with the assess and reassess process, mm -hmm. that's kind of the it's kind of the 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 crux of it all. That's that's the thing. Um, like we were talking about earlier, probably the most most important piece that a client can walk away with. Okay. And then just then there's just a list of drills, and you can just go through. There's a whole movement. That's in your classroom, right? Exactly. It's in the okay, class. So I'll just go and could test this. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's going to just continue to get built out. Um, eventually, very soon, probably this week, I'm going to be launching a, um, a paid community where we go more in depth and we do um, more structured group calls like this, where we actually walk through and we get deeper into the applied neuroscience and in the context, using the drills in the context of different scenarios like concussion or athletic performance or pain relief. Um, I also worked in, in pain therapy for, for years. Um, okay. and, and a lot of my clients are chronic pain clients. So um, that's definitely in my wheelhouse and that and athletic performance are my two big um, the community is built kind of around elite performance, but you know, nobody gets to perform at an elite level when they're in pain. Right. So that's usually step one is to deal with that. But anyway, that's coming, that's coming very soon. I just had, uh, uh, my wife just gave birth to triplets. So things are a little oh, wow. Good. in flux right now <laughs> as we transition. Um, but all that's coming down the pipeline um, very soon. So look out for that. But the DIY neuro, that is a definitely a, an easy place to get you started. And you can you can message me through the community anytime if you have any questions or comment on the videos, whatever. Um, I'm always checking in every day to this community. So I'm always around. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. So OJ, here's a, here's a, a way of kind of thinking about it, I guess, you know, the technology you've got is super awesome. You obviously can see the benefits that people get with the cool brain mapping that you've got. So then it's just a matter of who's coming into your clinic, right? And then how far is your clinic taking the people? Because when you think about neuro as a training perspective, if, if somebody's doing the best workout with the best oxygen and they're doing deadlifts and they're going to do an eight week session, it's at the end of the eight week session that you figure out that like 10% of the people got worse because they have a vestibular and a vision if issue that was taking place when they were trying to do deadlifts. So, you know, are you taking people that are just elderly and they're coming in and you're working with them and that's your business model and that's sweet. Or do you take people who are like athletes and you're like working with them? Okay, you know, it... I'll explain a little bit. Uh, so we are located in Toronto in Canada. So here there is no private insurance or public insurance that covers this scenario. So hmm. in itself, that becomes a challenge. Now you need to go out and market. And these are not cheap, like uh a complete session of uh, 30 or 40 TMS is, is four or $5,000. Um, so that's one issue. I was thinking of two particular markets. One market is people who are after enhancement, whether they're uh, in a sports, in business, or, uh, you know, they're uh, salespeople that need that uh, mental clarity and, and motivation. And the second are people who actually have an ailment, whether it's a, uh, 
uh, they're addicted or uh, there is chronic pain or there is ADHD because the TMS apparently, uh, and I've been to one tr short training in California from an operating clinic, apparently in conjunction with the rest of it, like with the lifestyle change and and the hygienes you need to do, uh, yeah. it, it is effective. But you need the whole thing. You just can't tie the guy to the machine <laughs> and hope. But but that's it. But that's also where I was referencing kind of like the neuro training and the deadlifting side of it. Right. Because just because they sit on the machine and they go through all of those things, you don't know where their deficit is. And if you're just trying to get people in to do the sessions for the machines, then you just, you know, get a few people who start becoming your testimonials. I mean, Toronto is a huge area. You'll just build a business on referrals. I really want to help. Like, I really want to. That's why I'm personally taking all these courses and showing interest. Um, we have 14 doctors on board in two locations, but they're pain management doctors. They're, they're keen into injection, uh, yeah. you know, uh, and I want to change how people approach pain. And believe me, if your mindset is better and if you're physically looking after yourself, I think, you know, you're addressing a lot of your pain issues. If that's yeah. your circumstance, I would I would highly suggest you uh, try to talk Brandon into flying in and like meeting with your team. Because <laughs> oh, then you're good. having the higher level <laughs> conversation with everyone present, with everyone's ego right in the room about what they know. Yeah, it's um, you know, where does Brandon live? Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, okay, nice warm. <laughs> yeah. We should fly there. <laughs> Yeah, you should come down here and if it's good. Probably be easier for trip. Yeah, maybe maybe wait a couple months, but but I, you know, again, I've 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 been heavily involved in the pain industry. And um I just want to commend you, first of all, OJ, for for stepping outside of the norm and the traditional like thought process of you know inject come back in a, in a month and get another one, or maybe we'll cut you open. Right. You know, you know what I mean? The traditional health model in the West yeah. um, is more symptom based and is like kind of tied in with the pharmaceutical industries and, and all that, like we all know all about that. So we don't need to get into it, but I commend you for actually like taking the steps and really digging deep. And it sounds like you're really invested in actually helping people and finding root causes. And, you know, I, that's awesome. So you um, um, probably have a large influence on these doctors and you're probably really uh, trying hard to get them to kind of shift their mindset away from the, you know, jab first approach, right? Um, and in chronic pain, I, I say all this because I've been in it and I know how hard that is. Um, so that's huge. The... As you know, the patient side of it also is tricky to change that mindset, but you're already doing it with lifestyle things. I would say, again, I'll give another plug for neuro training because the, the really powerful thing about the neuro drills is that they're so easy and the barrier to entry is so small. Mm -hmm. And if you can show somebody in a session, especially when you have the technology to show them with a picture, here is your brain function. This area of your brain is not very, it's underactive, right? We can see in your parietal lobe right here, this part is not super active. You need more stimulation there. We're gonna do it with this magnet. I also want you, I'm gonna give you these movement drills that activate that specific part of your brain. So I want you to go home, this is your homework. You just do this four times a day. It's a simple ankle circle. And you can show them with an assessment process like a range of motion or balance that their balance or their range of motion improves when you do this brain mapping drill. And in that moment, you made this connection in numer from numerous angles and that patient's like, oh, 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 damn, this is really cool. I get it. Okay, I'm going to go home and do this. And when they do that, they obviously get much better results and they pay you $5,000 more as a tip. That's why I like this EEG because yeah. Initially cool. and during the program and maybe at the end of it, people visually will see. 
because yeah. you can tell them all about you know neurons not or part of the brain not functioning but you know they think they're just sales gimmick it goes over their head yeah but once they see it but i'll be delighted i think so my first step is to go back to your site and register and just get a better idea and maybe we could connect later yeah absolutely okay. uh, and you said i could text you through the community uh section yeah. of the site you can message me in there i'll shoot you a message after this yeah have you you signed up for the community right how did if i don't you, think i have i'll how did you get on this zoom call uh i think there was just a place that you would uh you were allowed to ask more information on social media i think that's how i got it it must have been huh. a while back interesting cool well i'm glad you're here <laughs> but i'll text you my um uh, my email anyways yeah great yeah i'll reach out and we can we can chat further about it for sure okay I got some good ideas for you. Um, yeah, thanks, OJ. TJ, I want to get back to you, brother. What do you What do you do up in uh, BC? Uh, I am a physio and have a few clinics uh, around Victoria and Vancouver. And so most of my life now is actually management and mentorship and stuff like that because the family's getting pretty big. But my love is uh, trying to help patients who have concussions. Oh, really? Beautiful. Yeah. I so too. that's what I dig. And I'm, I'm uh, probably going to be jumping into a course called Concussion Nerds with a gal named Natasha Vilch. Um, super nice on Vancouver Island as well. Um, and like yeah, when I person. saw this also on social media, um, her, her clinic is called Symphony Rehab in Nanaimo. Cool. Um, and I don't know if you dig it or not. I, I think you would like it. She uses a ton of tech, both for assessment and for treatment. But um, uh, one of the things that really intrigues me is that she does some uh, intensives where patients come in every day for a week, three times a day for an hour at a pop. That's and I've cool. never seen anyone in our world do that. So, yeah, yeah sure. I'm trying to integrate uh, all sorts of stuff from vestibular system to autonomics to um, brain stem nuclei and pons, as well as physical heart rate ramping. Uh, and then we've got some clinical counselors who work with us and sometimes have to send them back to neurology and doctors and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, just looking at her website. It looks like a pretty comprehensive um intense program it looks really cool like, yeah it is pretty cool something i would love to take at some point um yeah so concussions are the reason i got into all of this in the first place um i played american football for for many years throughout college and um i also was a, a young young man that erred on the side of <laughs> Very risk tolerant, we'll say. That's the nice way to say it. Nice way to say that I do used to do a lot of really stupid stuff. And I hit my head a lot. And I've had numerous concussions. Um, you know, back in my heyday was before we knew about things like CTE or really before the whole concussion world really blew open. Um, so we didn't do a lot of preventative and there was no rehab really. So anyway, um, my short story was that I had, I uh, was started experiencing a lot of like changes that I was not okay with. And they were really affecting me in really profound ways. And so um, I, I stumbled upon flow states first. And that was a really cool, um, eye-opening um, deep dive into the neurobiology of flow and psychologically and for my mental health um it helped me understand that that was like a big part of what i was missing in my life was the was the access to flow states and i think it's kind of unique to american football but not not totally um unique 
not completely unique at all. So what I mean is like when you get done playing American football, there are no pickup games after that. You don't get to just go play anymore. You're done. So if that is your primary flow activity and you don't have much else to fall back on, you get that sense of purpose and identity ripped out of you and you have nothing left. And then you also throw on top of that a bunch of head injuries and you're kind of ripe for things like PTSD and um, post concussion syndrome on top of that. And it can be a, it can be a pretty gnarly roller coaster after that. And I definitely experienced that. Um, a lot of other athletes experience this loss of access to flow states. You know, think of any, any competitive college athlete that then graduates and goes into a accounting job, right? Or um, anything where they just go sit at a desk and stop moving and they no longer have access to flow. That can be a mental health like disaster for some people. Um, when they lose that. So anyway, that was um, a big eye-opening moment for me and um, really sent me down a deep, dark, deep rabbit hole of uh, the neurobiology of what's happening in flow. And um, I've done a bunch of courses through the Flow Research Collective. You know, um, I am definitely an expert in that and I am very passionate about it. And I think that's the, that's like the end game that we're all looking for and, and and basically everything that we're doing is to find flow because it's total immersion it's total presence it's you know um highly enjoyable it's autotelic so i mean the end is the goal i mean the means is the goal right it's an end in itself and anyway i could go all day about that but the concussion piece came later with the neurology when I stumbled upon the applied neuro um, through companies. The main company that I learned through is called Next Level Neuro, and I teach their mentorship now. So I teach applied neuroscience through them. Um, and they've been doing it for collectively together. The founders have been doing it for over 40 years. Um, and one of the founders, Kathy, she founded an, another company before Next Level Neuro called Z Health Performance. And Z Health um, was kind of the original, um, one of the first taking applied neurology and you know putting it in the hands of um, coaches, trainers, and clinicians um, that were kind of kind of breaking away from the clinical model because you can go get a functional neurology certificate through like the Carrick Institute or um, some of these other really big neurology firms and they're great they're incredibly comprehensive and involved but they're really working on a clinical research model which is which is okay but when you do that you are kind of taking a taking a part of it out of it that is more holistic and individual. And what I mean by that is I have over my time working in neurology come across many clients who have been to everyone, including many neurologists, and they've been through vestibular rehab or they've been through behavioral optometry and they've done all the things, but they still have these migraines or they still have vertigo or POTS, right? I somehow have found my way into the POTS community and I have like four or five clients with POTS right now. Hmm. And they've been to see everybody, but they're still struggling. And almost every time it comes down to two things. Number one, these clinicians are not assessing the state of their nervous system in the moment. Number two, they're following a a um, clinical research guideline, a protocol that is generalized to everyone because it's based on this clinical research model that was probably done 20 years ago. For some people that's gonna work, for the majority of people, it's actually causing more problems than it is actually helping. And so almost to the person, that have come to me after going through these types of uh, models is 
I do an assessment with them and I just, I say, okay, show me what you have been given through this um, clinician. And by the way, this also works in physio and physical therapy with movement. You can assess this the same way and you can dial in the dosage for that individual nervous system the same way. But they'll do this like, you know, simple VOR drill that they're supposed to do 20 repetitions. And when they get to 10 repetitions, I see their eyes like rolling back in their head. All right, I'm exaggerating, but I see this like threat level rising and their nervous system is starting to like hunker down. Sometimes they go into a straight up like fight or flight state. Their sympathetics ramp up and they're just like a cornered animal. And I'm like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. And they're just like, I don't know why I'm not getting better. And it's like, well, maybe you're just doing too much. All right, let's dial it back down. And so we do, you know, I use gate as our assessment process every time because it's autonomous, it's unconscious. It's the, it's the best way that I can see how their nervous system is organizing their movement, right? But then I'll have them do an assessment like a balance assessment or a range of motion. And it, it's almost always worse. Their balance gets worse or their range of motion tightens up and they're just, they're obviously like under threat. And so we just say, okay, okay, just, let's do the same thing, but let's do half the reps. And usually, you know, they get better and they're like, oh yeah, okay. I feel a little bit better. It's like, okay, well, why don't you go home? When you do this at home, just do less. Or let's close this eye because this is the weak one and this one needs a little bit more work. We need to find balance here. You know, so the way that we teach the neuro training and when you really use this assessment recess process and understand which areas of the brain are being affected by these sensory input systems and you can know which areas are a little bit out of balance or less active, then you can individualize the approach much more uh, succinctly for each person. And when they understand it, the really cool thing is then they're empowered to start to do this on their own. And they can start to do things, you know, without your constant oversight. And they really start to actually build progress on their own. And they're coming back with new drills that they've like just come up with out of nowhere. Like I noticed that, you know, you know, every time I look over here um, in my car, um, I get like a little blurry vision. So I, I started to just like gaze over there when I was, this happened just last week with a client. I started to just gaze over there when I was like um, just sitting um, at dinner or something. And um, I did my reassessment process and I found out that it was really good. So I just started doing that. Is that okay? And I'm like, hell yeah, that's okay. You just, you nailed it. You're basically a neuro trainer now. Good job. Keep going. Right. So I really, I love that part about it too, is that the empowerment that it gives people to kind of be their own advocate and like, you know, really heal themselves. So anyway. If understanding the brain pathways was only that simple to just be the neuro trainer at that point. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing too. Yeah, you, they don't have to understand it. Like we don't even have to understand it because you can see it working in the moment and you know you're on the right path. Like that's the power of immediate feedback. Um, so anyway. So where is this website? I didn't know any of this uh, existed with you or this community until recently. So you're not in the community either? Uh, well, I saw it. Yeah, I applied for the community, but the stuff you're speaking of, I haven't I haven't heard of or, or read into. So uh, where's okay. the best way to access that information? Um, your, the, your webinar affiliate link, Brandon. <laughs> from Next Level Neuro? Yeah. Yeah. So, JR, let me, are you, at, are you in the school community? In the NeuroFlow Performance Lab community? Is that how you got on this call? Uh, NeuroFlow Performance Lab. Yep. You got it. JR, how do you say your last name? Justison? Justison. Justison. Okay. I'll send you a link through school um, in your DMs. I'll DM you a link to check out uh, Next Level Neuro. The, the mentorship that I teach through them. Um, it actually starts in November. So 
if you want to jump on board that that's that's how you you can get deep into it um okay. i'm, I'm going to continue to you know build a library of um workshops and and stuff in this community but if you want to go fast and you want to get deep right away that's pr probably your best option um yep, right on yeah and right on. you know I, I would thank you and oj and of course joe joe's always here thanks for being here as always but for showing up today because this is really helpful for me to help build this community too like to know what what kind of people are here and what you know would be most helpful for you to continue your um, progress and, and on your own path um, in the neuro world and in the flow world too, you know? But um, so I guess like, JR, you're a physio, OJ, yeah. you're doing um, Cairo, right? And you're in the concussion world. Both of you are kind of working and working and working with brains at this point. That's kind of the next stage of your career and evolution. So maybe the next thing I do is a quick, quick workshop on concussion. Because from applied neurology, there are some really powerful and easy tools to help people rehabilitate from concussion. Um, that are so simple, right? We all know some of the um, the basics around um, like light sensitivity and you know um, ways to protect the brain as it's healing. Um, but like things around like the energy crisis that happens in the brain, ways ways to fuel the brain using respiration and even nutrition and things like that. Simple things there. There are some simple things. Um, with like peripheral vision um, that can be really helpful as people are starting to rehabilitate and are really sensitive to visual drills. There are bottom up things with movement that are also really helpful that you can do in conjunction with vision and vestibular training. One big hole in the clinical neuro model is the disconnect between the brain and body. It's so interesting to me because one of the simplest things that you can do to help people perform better on visual tasking drills is to have them move while they do it. Because the proprioceptive input that their brain is getting just helps it like lower the level of threat enough to where that they can then do the visual drills or vestibular drills much more productively. We call it stacking and it's, yeah. it's more functional as well. hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, hey, um, I have a question and comment for OJ. Is that, do you mind if I just real please. quick? Yeah, go ahead. OJ, sure. what, uh, what technology and database are you using with your brain mapping? Is it NeuroGuide? Uh, you know, we just purchased it. The equipment we purchased is from actually sh being shipped from UK. It already arrived in Canada yesterday. So I think it's called MagStim. That's the TMS. And um, no, I think the other equipment is Brainwave, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. The, okay. The, uh, the machine that does the brain mapping. But... Um, but we haven't received that one yet. I'm just beginning to set this up. So I was in California last week and the manufacturing company introduced me to a clinic uh, in Long Beach. And I was really impressed. It was mostly a uh, drug rehab. So apparently this uh, TMS works uh, for people who have addiction. But the key wasn't the equipment. The key was the sessions of basically coaching, I call it. Uh, that really made a difference. But technology, as Joe said, it's, it's just sexy. It just uh, brings people in, makes people uh, believers rather than conventional, come and let me coach you. So I really believe any gimmick that helps them, but the key is helping them. Like, you know, they should see the difference. And I think the 
uh, EEG will show. Like I did my own brain map. And for example, in the, I think it was a beta uh, uh, section, which deals with the sleep, like mine was all red, mm. uh, which automatically, you know, uh, shows that, that. Yeah. yeah, I don't have deep sleep. I mean, that, that visual in itself is a strong sales point. Like, you know, you see there is yeah. something that you need to look at. But the million dollar question is how you really get people on board. How do you keep them motivated to bring them in and make them a paying client? So that's why I think maybe Brandon's uh, application as a part of the whole thing, you know, the coaching, the lifestyle change. I haven't tested it, I'll be honest, but but the concept is, I think, is interesting. Please yeah. exhibit a certain amount of caution, OJ, because first off, the the data you're getting is based on norms and the european norms are have been questionable over the years versus neuroguide oh, okay. which was developed in america and neuroguide and dr thatcher's work is way more in the research community because listening to you i think you're going to be using the transcranial direct stimulation based on the qeeg findings uh, and Perfect. the S. Loretta going into the deep brain areas. And so I say, please have a bit of caution because you're going to use a powerful stimulator based on a normative finding. And what's normal for one person might not be normal for another. And so I found over the years with neurofeedback and this sort of thing, you may not, um, you might not always get the results that you want. And this is kind of what Joe was saying to me. And I really agree with them. Um, and so like when you look at your excess delta waves and say, no wonder I can't sleep and you have some clinical correlation, okay, word, that's very cool. And I think it, it gives a lot more value to the technological findings that you're getting, but just to use them by themselves and say, um, oh, this person has a hot cingulate. Uh, therefore, that fits with chronic pain. You, you just have to be careful because that's part of a system that's so interconnected with so many other things. And uh, uh, direct uh, stimulation, the way you're doing, is potentially powerful. And just to make sure you're not potentially misapplying it. Correct. This narrow guide is what does what does that do? Good. Neuroguide uh, from Robert Thatcher has a whole host of things, but the most important, in my opinion, is that they've got the strongest database of so-called okay. normative data based on right. gender, based on age uh, gradations, uh, and then they'll use that S. Loretta technology to direct, to, to take the surface uh, EEG and say, here are the deeper generators. Um, and so that's why I prefer it to the European stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he has other technologies where you can automatically sync up the TDCM to where the norms are needing more power and stuff like that. Correct. But, sure. But Dr. Thatcher will be the first to say, you know, you, you got to be careful. You can't just say, oh, um, Delta is low here and let's stimulate that region. High beta is too high here. Let's try to calm that region. Um, you have to take it in a larger context. Correct, understood. Thank you so much. Yeah, right on. Good luck with it. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for contributing. I mean, this was a wonderful conversation. I had a great time. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's great yeah, to thank meet you. you guys. Thank you all. OJ, to your point about uh, the coaching, there's a couple of businesses that I work with that are in the health space that are outside of the insurance model. And that's absolutely foundational for them is, is having the coaches coaching piece in it come in and get the touch points so that the people keep having conversations to make changes. So you're definitely doing the right thing there for sure. God bless you. Yeah. I I'm really convinced that, Helping people, um, if, if it doesn't happen, you're not going to have any customers left. You might trick them into coming in one, two, ten sessions. 
But uh, with coaching, you guarantee that there is improvement. And of course, technology and applications all put together might be a very strong uh, life changing. That's, you know, you need to change your lifestyle if you want to see difference, in my opinion. Absolutely. Great. But thank you, everybody. It was a great yeah. conversation. I hope we keep in touch. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I'm uh, all right. I'll reach out to you guys and just follow up on some of the stuff we talked about. And I'll be here every Tuesday morning just hanging out. Brandon, I got to say one more thing off of OJ saying that lifestyle. It's like we all agree with the lifestyle. Like no one's going to disagree with the lifestyle. But you came to a neuro call. So part of understanding your lifestyle in your environment is knowing your neuro. And that's why like neuro training and like this community that Brandon has here is so powerful. Yeah, so nice. So you can increase safety in the body. That's the part I wanted. You got to increase the safety and reduce the threat. And then that's the that's where the lifestyle really makes a big difference. Yeah, then you got the capacity to do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So, OJ, I'll also send you a, a link to jump into the community. Um, and I'll follow up with both you guys. And yeah. Um, anyway, it was a pleasure. It was an honor. Nice to meet you guys. And that was great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank Have a great one. Bye. Bye.